Steve, can you hear me? He's muted, but he should be able to hear you. Steve, you need to unmute yourself. I'm, uh, I was off looking for something else. Um, I've got lots of noise going on. I got cleaners upstairs. I'm in the cellar. I got a water pump going. So I'm going to keep myself muted unless I have to say anything to anybody. Okay, thank you. No. All right, John, you're now the host, so you should be good to go. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Have a good meeting. <laughs> thank you. Sure. Or maybe I have to do that. No, I, yep. I can do it. Okay, you got it. Um, I just, unless uh, Zoom is the uh, active one, I uh, wind up typing someplace else. Uh, there's an easy way to temporarily mute, mute, and that's hold the space bar down. But of course, if you're looking at something else, the space bar goes bonkers. Anyway, um, four more people to come in, right? Three, three more minutes for- Yeah, we're, 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 we're early because I wanted to talk with Rebecca. So we have and Barbara Carbonari to come in, Sonia and Melissa. And I know if we'll, uh, we'll have at least, I think, one guest, which is Suzanne Gray, who, who lives over on Raoul Road. Mm -hmm. Or Raoul, yeah, Raoul Road. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, it's quiet in here. I may. Uh... Now I'm unmuted when I don't have to hold the space bar down. And our new members coming, going to join us? I believe first, so. First order of business. I hope so. It's going to be a value. She's going to be a valuable asset, I think. Yeah, I think so too. So my wife has got a Zoom meeting going on exactly the same time. That's why I'm relegated to the cellar. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the cleaners have gone home. Because I don't know what, if your house is any different than mine, but anything, anybody that steps or rolls a vacuum cleaner or anything upstairs gets very noisy down here. Oh. I'm going to admit uh, Ryan Curley. But I don't see him. Well, he's just an R right now. He hasn't uh, enabled his video and he's muted. Okay. Well, he, can, he can hear us, but we can't see nor hear him. Okay, fair enough. I don't know whether it's fair or not. Should we start uh, trying to contact uh, Melissa? 
Antonio? I'll give them a little more time. Actually, my problem is right now I don't know the I don't I don't see a clock. I don't have a clock down here. What time do you have? Four o'clock even. Okay. When I first tried to get into the meeting, my, my first meeting, I didn't realize that you had to um, go to the calendar in order to get the link. That's not obvious. Here's Sonia. Have you let her in? Mm-hmm. There she is. Hi, Sonia. Her audio is not connected yet. I just asked her to unmute. You did. Hi, Sonia. Hello. We can't see you though. Uh, let's see. Cut the, uh... I don't know if I'm I'm in charge of that or no. I don't think so. Sonia has to. Oh, there it is. There you are. Okay, good looking. Um, who's running the meeting today? Is that you, John? I'm in charge nominally. Okay. okay. Um, and we are now a quorum. I'll just give it a few more minutes to see if um, Barbara. Let's see, we're five of us and we're three. So I'll see if, if uh, Barbara and Melissa um, show up before we get underway. Uh, Nancy, Nancy Civetta wants to listen in. Good. Hi, Nancy. Hello. Hey, Tara, can you bring me a pen, please? Hello, Suzanne. You um, you need to uh, unmute yourself and okay. unvideo and let you let the video show. All right, or maybe I'm the one that does that. Yeah, you should need to unmute. Okay, how about that? That's better. That's great. Can you can you hear me too? Also. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're all. Uh, we're all at least here and uh, thank you for um, agreeing to meet with me today. Okay. Well, it's first thing on the agenda. Um, and we have Well, we have a quorum or oh, admit Melissa Lo Yao. Hi, Melissa. You have to unmute yourself. There we go. We can't Hi. see you, Melissa. Sorry, I uh, I um, ran into some trouble today. I'm I'm driving while I'm in the meeting. Oh <laughs> so boy. I'm going to just stay with the video off. Okay, that makes sense. 
You want to watch the road and not the TV set. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if you guys want me to start. I don't know if the meeting's been called to order. And, you know, it's your meeting, uh, so I'm not quite sure. I will, um, yeah. Suzanne, I'll call you in a, in a bit. Um, okay, great. I call the meeting to order. Uh, there are five of us, four present. Unfortunately, Barbara Carbonari is not yet signed in. Um, she may have found the process a, a bit complicated the first time around. I'll, get in touch with her afterwards if she doesn't join us in the meantime. Um, the first issue on the agenda is an issue which has been brought to my attention about um, Dyer Pond access. And the, the, the background is that there's a a uh, proposal to um, uh, um, further some land, do some building on a piece of property which is to the east of um, Roll Road, where there are a number of uh, abutters. And the only issue about this that we at the uh, rights of, of access can consider is that there's a pathway that leads, leads from Rawl Road east, uh, crosses the uh, Eversource uh, right of way and leads over to Dyer Pond. Um, Dyer Pond is a great pond. It's over 10 acres, which means it's owned by the state and it is completely surrounded by national, by the National Park. So there are two public agencies involved in the ownership of Dyer Pond. Um, I have walked that path over to Dyer Pond from Rowell Road. It's a lovely walk. Uh, the pond is in good shape, which interests me from because I'm also involved in the Natural Resource Advisory Board. Um, I guess the other thing I discovered is that there's many mosquitoes on the east side of Wellfleet is on the west. But um, critical thing is that this this pathway, as it leaves Raoul Road and heads east, is, has been recorded as an easement in um, uh, the county headquarters in, in Barnstable. Uh, John, the uh, um, uh, uh, surveyor uh, says no. Did you uh, see the, the letter from the surveyor? No, I didn't. Let me, it's, I'm in my printer, let me go get it. Okay, that's kind of a critical issue. It was in one of the emails that we got okay. uh, from Kane Land Surveyors. Mm -hmm. uh, dear planning board members, um, this is dated July 12th, 2021. I am aware of concern being voiced by some uh, abutters to the proposed subdivision at 70 Rowell Road regarding the path that runs through part of the property. And I would like to provide clarity to some of the concerns. I find the concern about closing access to the path surprising as it is not true and no butter contacted the applicants or me to ask about this issue. At the preliminary hearing last November, the applicants were clear that they had no intention of blocking access to the path. As to the aspect of deeded rights in the path, I believe some abutters are unaware of the distinction 
between their subdivision and the 70 Rowell Road property. Many of the butters live in Wealthy Hill subdivision, and he gives the plan number, and their homeowners association covenant, gives the deed book and all that, does mention the right and easement of enjoyment in and to the recreational area roads and easements, Article 3. However, the covenant further defines the easements as the various pedestrian and other easements as shown in the plan. Uh, on the plan, these pedestrian easements are specifically shown as pedestrian easements 10 foot wide that runs along the property line between lots 30 and 31 and a pedestrian easement 15 feet wide that runs along the rear of lots 30, 31, 32, and 33. The 70 Rowell Road property is not part of the Wellfleet Hill subdivision. The 70 Rowell Road property is from the June 1975 subdivision, plan book 299, page 66, and is not subject to the covenants of the Wellfleet Hills subdivision. So he's pretty much saying uh, that there are no deeded rights to that path, the 70 Rowell Road path. And that's by Kane Land Surveyors? Kane Land Surveyors, yeah. yeah well, fair enough. I guess the, the we're, we're getting into deep waters here because I have a I have a map which is produced by the Kane Land Surveyors and shows that there is a recorded easement on that path, at least as far as um, the Eversource right of way. Okay. Um, well, that I don't have. And I also think that we're uh, in uh, skating on thin ice because that path, if it does get closed, doesn't um, eliminate anybody's access to Dyer Pond. There are multiple ways of getting to Dyer Pond. That's just one of them. Um, I'm also aware of the thin ice because um, I, I was thinking of two options. If, if it was, if it, if it was clear that there was an easement, then the, I think we would have um, as a right of public access an obligation to um, bring that attention to the planning board. But if it's, there is no easement or it's sufficiently unclear, um, I would be inclined to say we shouldn't take any action because that gets us into, um, it gets us into waters where deep water, so to speak, where I'm not sure that we are, are competent to intervene. Don, may I add something? Yes, please, Melissa. Uh, so I checked out the path myself and I spoke with um, Kurt. Uh, he, he did say that there is a deeded easement there. I think it, it's in land court. Uh, maybe the Kane letter was just saying that they believe that the new owners are not going to block access along the deeded path. Uh, but it was my understanding that the, there was a deeded easement in land court and I have not had any time to pull that. Um, but that was my understanding that it, it was a legal right of way. Uh, that's what's shown on the, on, the, on the plan, which is dated May of this year. A little, little bit too bad that Barbara's not with us because we could use um, use her um, background since she's she's got le a legal legal background. Um, there is uh, in the audience a um, um, Suzanne Gray who uh, lives along Rowell Road, and I'd be interested to hear her view of this. Um, 
So, uh, Su Suzanne, can you hear me? Sure, I can. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, just I just want to give some background here. Um, uh, my family built this house in 1979 when this subdivision was first created. So um, I have historical knowledge of this path and the use of this path since 1979. Um, in the plans that are dated 1970. Seven, I believe that I, I believe I sent those over to John Real. Um, I could put it up on my screen if you'd like, but it it actually shows a right of way, and it says it's it's a deeded right of way in the plans for the subdivision. Um, also within the subdivision, and I know this gets a little bit confusing, but I'm going to say it anyway because I think it makes sense in the bigger picture. Also in the subdivision are other easements throughout the subdivision, which are in place in order for people to travel from one part of the subdivision to another in order to get to this right of way, to get to Dyer Pond. In other words, when he when Bill Cobb built the subdivision, he was trying to allow people easements to get to this path. Um, and I know that may sound like hearsay, but I do have um, some old plans before the, the subdivision was built where it says on, on it, it says right of way to Old Kings Highway. It, it actually was, and I can put it up on the screen if you want me to. This is page 299, uh, book 299, page 66, which you've been referring to already. Um, this is an old right of way. And there's also documents and letters and quit claims and all sorts of things that are in the registry of deeds. Um, which allude to this path, this path that goes uh, to, it goes to the power lines. And then of course it goes into the uh, Cape Cod National Seashore and to Dyer Pond. Um, but it also uh, goes out what's now called Rowell Road, uh, which is a private road. And that takes you out to Long Pond Road. So these are old, um, paths that uh, are deeded. And in fact, um, the verbiage is, um, it's, it's the verbiage that they've used in these documents, um, call it a pedestrian easement to be used by anyone who's lawfully um, uh, entitled to use the, the path, right? So we don't really know, you know, what that means, but um, in our deeds for Wellfleet Hills Homeowners Association, it talks about pedestrian paths, and it talks, you know, I mean, it, it talks about these easements and pedestrian paths, and I, it's my contention that it includes that, uh, the path that we're talking about that goes to Dyer Pond, so, um, you know, it, it's, it may be something that, um, I, I should also tell you this, is that um, a group of homeowners and myself have hired um, legal representation to look further into this um, because of the challenges with looking at these plans and putting, you know, the, the documents together. And it's also a lot of um, legalese that if you're not familiar with it, you're not quite sure exactly what they're saying. I had... One question for you, Suzanne. Um, as far as you understand it, is this um, easement or right of use restricted only to the people in the development along Rowell Road, or is it um, available to the general population? Um, I will answer that in how it's being used. Uh, the general population is using it. Um, I would say on any given day, there's probably about mm, between 25 and 40 people that use this path. They come from Old Kings Highway, both sides of Long Pond Road. They come from as far away as uh, Dalmas Trail, which is off uh, Gross Hill Road. Um, so, you know, it's a very well-known path that leads and it's, and it's nice, as Melissa said, um, 
she met up with my husband yesterday and I, I guess they walked it together. I wasn't available. So sorry about that. But um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's used by a lot of people. Um, and there's no, there's no indication that anybody wants to put up a sign that anybody that I know of here wants to put up a sign that says, you know, this is only to be used by you know, you have to be a card carrying person to use this trail. That's just not, uh, that's not something that we've even discussed. Okay. Thank you for your input. Um, let me go back to the committee members now to Steve, Sonia, Melissa. Um, what do you think we should um, do now? We could do nothing or we could um, try to um, take some sort of steps to, uh, given that we are just the RPAC, right? A public access, to take some steps to preserve this, um, make sure that this pathway is, reserved, is preserved. It's evidently used by a number of people, preserved throughout, um, any what seemed to be perfectly legitimate development of the property. So any thoughts? Well, again, we can't, well, I don't think we can do anything on this uh, case, this uh, right away uh, as a means, as uh, a prevent of preventing anybody from getting the Dyer Pond. So uh, access to a great pond is not in the consideration and whether uh, this group should be uh, sticking its nose into uh, this situation I, I don't know I would say no we should uh, it's none of our concern anybody else want to Melissa or Sonia you step forward um I've mostly been just, been just trying to understand what's happening here. It sounds like to me that this isn't the only way that people access Dyer Pond and there's several other ways to access it. So I would think, I mean, I, I'm not totally familiar with the path, but it sounds like um, there is other ways to get to the pond. Is this more of just preserving an older path that we're looking at doing? Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I, I see a problem with accessing, you know, if there's this one path that's not available, but there's others, then there I'm not entirely of, sure what we're There are plenty of other paths. Do, yeah. yeah. You can get to it from uh, Long Pond down Forest Road and then uh, continue on way something or other. Mm. And uh, you can get to that same corner and that's, and that's the corner that this path takes you to once you cross the uh, power lines, takes you to that same four-way intersection. You can also get to that same four-way intersection from the east. Mm -hmm. um, or you can get to Dyer Pond off of Great Pond Road, and that's yet another way. I don't remember the numbers of the ways. Yeah, I mean, the only way I know of accessing Dyer Pond, my son likes to go there, and I was trying to get there this week. We just never... We're able to make the walk, but we generally access it through the Great Pond side. Yeah. And I know you can do the same from the Long Pond side, right? Yeah. You can get there as well. And in terms of like those um, smaller footpaths through neighborhoods, I'm not too familiar with them. So. Um, well, I walk, I walk the path. Okay, go ahead. Is, is Melissa there to want to say something? And then Nancy Chivetta wants to add to the conversation. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I, I, I sympathize with the homeowners that uh, they have this deeded path that is going to be built on. Uh, and it's, I did see it myself. It is, it is something that is worth preserving um, to the best of our abilities. Um, but I, I agree with, with what's being said. There are other ways, uh, but at the same time, I think if I compare this to some of our earlier work, we were looking at the boathouse and there are other dune paths to that beach there. And we're focused on preserving one of them, um, even though we have another one. 
um, for the sole reason that we've had it for a very long time and it's worth preserving for historic reasons and also because it's it's a good right of way to the boathouse. Um, but my point being that um, I'm not sure if the argument that just because there are other paths to the pond is enough for us to say we shouldn't look at something. Um, however, I do think that um, it really is a path to the power lines um, and it's not necessarily going to stop anybody from using the path that goes from the power lines to the pond. Um, so in terms of our committee and what our charges, I don't necessarily see what we can really do for them, especially since they have legal your audio is breaking up. Melissa, I'm going to go to ideas about what, what, what would we, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, finish up. Can you hear me? Now we can, we can now. Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know where I lost you, but um, I, I was, I was just saying that I, uh, since the path is really, it goes to the power lines, so there are lots of ways to get through the power lines to the pond. Um, I, breaking up don't, I don't know if this really falls under our purview um, to preserve the rights. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I I, my, my, my last question was just get into. Now we've Nancy, maybe we maybe we should hear from Nancy now. Can you hear me? I can. Where's Hi. there you are, Nathan? Um, I'm I'm speaking uh, not a shellfish constable, just as a, a citizen of the town. Um, I've probably used that path for the past forty four years uh, to access the pond, and I don't live in that neighborhood. And it's a great place in the middle of the summer when you can't get any parking at either of the pond lots. Um, and you know, I don't think that it's excessively used. But it is a it is place to park um, because you can get um, as, as a member of the public. So I I counted that I probably used that since I was fourteen that that path there. Um, so it is publicly used, not just by the um, the people in the homeowners association. Uh, but I also, I get what Melissa is saying. It really does just go to the power lines. It's just provided a great way for those who know uh, to not, when you can't get into a, into a parking lot at long or great, that you have another way of getting to Dyer's in the middle of the summer. So that's just my contribution as a townsperson. Thank you, Nancy. John, could I just say one other uh, comment here? Sure. Um, you know, because of this uh, proposed subdivision, what they want to do is take one lot and divide it into two lots and put two houses on mm -hmm. this property that, um, and one house would be on one side of the walking path and the other house would be on the other side. But in order to get access to make a, a driveway or a road in there, they need to cross over this path in two different uh, places. So, um, you know, I mean, eventually people will not be happy about um, others walking right through their backyard. I mean, it's, but, you know, be that as it may. The other thing um, that I've uh, researched, which I really was not aware of, is that the um, land um, on the power lines, half, half of that land that's on the power lines, where this particular path is, is owned by the abutters to the power lines. And I just didn't know if you were aware of that, of that um, because one neighbor 
of mine who actually owns land that is goes into the power lines said to me that, you know, she pointed to people that were walking on the power lines, they were going to Dyer Pond, and she said, those people are trespassing on my property and they're not allowed to be there. So I'm, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I will say I've looked at the plans and the plans show that halfway into the power lines is owned by the, um, the landowner uh, that's contiguous to that power line area um, on, you know, a non-national non, um, seashore side. So uh, I, people are talking about having access um, via the power lines and I don't, I don't know that that's so. So I'm, I'm bringing that up as something that you guys may wanna look into at another time. I just, you know, that's what I was told. I know that they own land that goes into the access of the power line. And when the power lines trim the vegetation in there, oftentimes they're trimming people's plants that, that, that they've planted there because they, because it's individually owned by the abutters there. Wonderful. Um, I think my point of view is fairly similar to uh, what Melissa said and what Nancy said, that even although there are a number of alternate ways to get to Dyer Pond. I, I hate to give up any, what appears to be um, historical way to the pond, or what appears to have some legal merit. Uh, th that being said, all of this is going to go before the, the planning board I think in the middle of August. And what I would propose is that we simply write to the planning board, uh, make it clear that we're aware of the issue, um, take the position that we would like the availability of the, the path uh, to remain even after the uh, developments take place and um, encourage the planning board to in include words to that effect in any judgment that they make. And that's a big mouthful. And um, if there's some broad, if we're willing to agree with that, I. I would be willing to try to draft a letter which we could look at. Um, we'd have, we have time to look at it again bef before the planning board meets. Um, if that sounds a little bit like I'm also advising that we punt it upstairs that to the planning board, that's also true because I, I think um, there are a range of issues here which we're not really um, in a position to answer the planning board's better suited for that. Um, what I propose is that, that uh, for the moment we don't we don't take a vote, but we would let's look let's look what I can draft up. If um, uh, Steve and Sonia want to draft up an alternate document. That's fine. We can discuss that further. Uh, hopefully, when Barbara's available um, to give us some uh, background. Is when's the planning board meeting? Middle of August. Middle of August. Middle, yeah, middle August, of August. August eighteenth. August eighth. That's what I thought. Um, I am totally out of pocket next week for family reasons, but that still gives us time um, to uh, have another debate about this. And um, we're, at which point we could decide to do nothing or to send one of the two letters I propose or to send some mixture of the two letters I propose. Um, 
complicated and I, I think we've learned a lot today and um, worth thinking it through. We have time to think it through. That sounds good, John. Are we on board with that? Yep, I think that sounds good. Okay. But I'm not gonna do another letter. So I, I think we're, I think what you're saying, John, is, uh, is the position of the committee. Well, let me, let me write it out and see if you still think that when you see me, okay. see what I've written that's out. A, that's a deal, <laughs> that's a deal. Um, Suzanne, thank you um, for drawing this to our attention and uh, we'll, we will, um, Continue. we'll see what happens uh, when we meet again in, uh, I don't know, long about the 10th of August, plus or minus. Great. Thank you so much for um, putting me on your agenda. And also, I just want to say, I really appreciate the work that uh, your committee is doing. I think it's um, vitally important. Um, and, and I'm not talking about, you know, this particular path. I'm talking about in the bigger picture. It's vitally important that um, we maintain uh, public access to some of the beautiful uh, places that um, Wellfleet has to offer. So I, I appreciate your, your work on this board. Thank you for your support. Okay, yeah, thank thanks. You. I'll sign off now, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. take care. Bye-bye. Next um, item on the agenda is um, Lieutenant Island and Melissa and Sonia, I'll, 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 I'll flip the discussion with KP Law first. Uh, you had some discussion with uh, uh, KP Law and uh, I'd be interested from either or both of you, uh, a summary of what you heard. Do you want me to start, Melissa? Sure. Are you, are you muted, Melissa? I think you muted. Yeah. Okay. I said sure. Well, so I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Now I can hear you. Good. Okay. Great. Yeah. So um, we met up with uh, KP Law and the town administrator. Um, you know, I just took some notes. We basically just kind of went through the questions, and you know, uh, we were able to be provided with some partial answers, and obviously some other things are are going to move further. Um, so we were looking at Heron Point Road. Um, so basically at this point, the assumption is the road is in fact private unless we can find evidence um, otherwise. Um, for the town to purchase the road, it would require town meeting authority. So that we're aware of. Um, and the town could own the lot, but that doesn't guarantee access over a private road. So just by the town acquiring that um, lot, we wouldn't really um, solve the issue of Heron Point Road and, and making that um, a public access point. So, um, you know, so we're gonna look further into that and, and see what could happen with that road. Um, another thing we discussed was the fact that most of Lieutenant Island roads are in fact private. Um, Lieutenant Island Road itself, the main road onto the island that is owned by the town and serviced by the town. But um, finding a way to make that connection to Heron Point Road and to the boathouse might be a little bit more complicated as it is through a private um, network of roads. Um, let's see where to go next. Sorry. Uses. We had a bit of a discussion just regarding Audubon and the upland lowland um, definition of the, um, the land of the Audubon deed. So um, we discussed, I think she's gonna have some um, title work done to look into that um, land and to where the boundaries are so we can determine um, the positioning of the road of Heron Point. Um, Let's see, just kind of going through my list here. But Sonia, would you just hold up a second? I just yeah. have a note that Barbara has sh shown up and so oh, I'd great. like to admit her. 
uh, as our new member. Barbara? I hit admit. You're, you're muted, Barbara. Oh, no, you're My apologies. I, I got held up at something here. So I'm very sorry to join my first meeting late. So I apologize. <laughs> well, we've missed you already because the last <laughs> discussion was a lot of, uh, had to do with a lot of legal issues. But oh, um, I'm, I'm I'll sorry. Try to, I'll try to fill you in on that. Uh, I'll give you a call uh, okay, okay. tomorrow or something like that and try to yeah. put you in See, there. Like behind me is my calendar and things are not so I apologize. But yeah, and I can always I can always watch the tape. So and, okay. and respond. So. That would, that'd be good. So there's also Steve Blanchard, uh, Sonia and Melissa yep. uh, here. Um, and uh, Sonia Woodman was um, briefing us on a discussion she had with your former partners at KP. Oh, really? Okay. About some issues out on Lieutenant Island on the on the uh, northwest corner of Lieutenant Island. So right. Sonia, please carry on. Great. So uh, just moving on. Let's see. I have all this number. So uh, we were asking about the advantage to accepting the road as a town road as public. Um, she mentioned that the abutters may have to be compensated. Um, but she also stated that most assessors will agree that no damage is done to the value of the land by changing the status of the road. Um, so, you know, that's something that could be communicated if, um, you know, there was to be an arrangement with the abutters. Um, is, that the just question, Her, is that just Heron Point Road uh, that you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, discussing Heron Point Road itself. Um, and then, yeah, the other thing we raised would be, uh, would the road be problematic because of the status of the road, right? It is a dirt road. It's not really in the best shape, um, just the, the location of it. So it'd be a matter of like whether the town would want to even accept that as a public road, you know, or would it be difficult to manage? Um, we were discussing determining who is um, maintaining the road at the moment. Um, the assumption is it's through the homeowners association. It's obviously not the town. It's not, um, you know, the town is at the moment just taking care of Lieutenant Island Road. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Moving on. Okay. There was some discussion of the prescriptive rights um, from the way things have been. Prescriptive rights wouldn't be needed because there's permission to pass that path that we'd been discussing. So that wouldn't really be necessary, she was saying. Um, and then let's see, lastly, we looked into the, the boathouse and town liability and the boathouse structure. Um, and we just kind of made sure that um, we added that consideration in just before we ended there to make sure that she was aware of the uh, the situation with the aggers wanting to maintain um, mm -hmm. shellfishing access to the boathouse and um, that the boathouse would be a consideration if the town were looking to purchase the property. Um, you know, whether they wanted to consider it um, a liability or, you know, it would be part of that um, discussion. So, so yeah, we basically just reviewed everything. Melissa, do you feel like I missed anything there? Anything? Just, Melissa, just do you want to add uh, anything? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, just that there was a question of who the abutters really are. And I think um, that's something that she's going to have to figure out from the title search. It's not, it's going to depend on how the subdivision was laid out in the process of um, which parcels of land were sold off at what time. Um, so that's something that she's going to have to follow up on. And then the other part that we spoke about was the question of whether or not we could use the derelict fee statute at the cul-de-sac. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Sonia, but I, I thought that the answer was that we would really need permission from all of the abutters, mm -hmm. who, whoever they are, all the abutters to the road, not just the, the two that surround the cul-de-sac. Right, right. 
Is this um is this an opinion in writing or is this a, a conversation with council? This was an informal uh, conversation, okay. mainly just to help them uh, better understand some of the issues. I think right. um, I think there was there was some information that could have been helpful for them for them to have in the letter that we hadn't put in, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was helpful for me as well to see exactly what they were looking for because I'm all new to this, so. <laughs> right, right, no, I mean, and it's, it's, even if you're not new to it, it's really, it's really complicated and a lot of it does mm -hmm. depend on things that you have to do research to find out, you know, who are the abutters, mm -hmm. who in addition to the abutters have rights in that way and you don't know until you start looking. Um, so was it, um, Katie Klein? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I worked with her quite a bit. So very good. Um, okay. One one thing she also said that we should do is confirm um, what we what we don't have right now is um, concrete knowledge of who exactly maintains the road. So she said that's something that we'll want to get. So maybe we need to speak to the other two homeowners that have bought the roads since the aggers aren't aware of who does. Was there any conversation about the fact that uh, Heron Point Road might not be the dirt road that we actually think it is? Um, yeah, and that, that was another complication that was a little hard to explain. Um, but I, I think they got the gist of it. Um, at least I hope so. <laughs> yeah, because uh, my opinion is that most of that road that we actually use and call Heron Point Road is actually not Heron Point Road, but it's uh, on uh, Audubon property, kind of mm -hmm. marshland. Do you think Audubon might know something about that? Do you think they have a better sense? I don't think they would. No, no. okay. Barbara, we've, we've spoken about um, potentially uh, thinking about making a, getting a survey to figure out where the, the dirt road really lies right. because it, there's some question as to whether or not it's moved over time. Uh, and the, the original understanding was that it was on Audubon land, but some of the satellite maps suggest that maybe it's not anymore, uh, but we don't know. Right. Right. No, I, that makes sense to me, um, a survey. I think even from the first time I heard about this, it just seemed like something that we couldn't get to answering a number of the questions before we really, you know, had more sense of where it is on the ground and, um, you know, who has rights relating to it. So, Sonia, one thing you said, and I, I may have, that that st struck me. A, a lot of this is just clarifying the situation, which is good. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I had the impression, and one thing you said is that the um, abutters on Heron Point Road would have some control over the use of that road. Perhaps not surprising, since it's a private road, and therefore. Even if the town bought the agar property, since you have to cross part of Heron Point Road to get onto that property, that they could um, stop the general public use of it. Uh, did I mishear that, or or is this this is an issue that um, ought to concern us? Um, you were breaking up. I don't know if that's on my end or did, or if that was, um, but basically, I heard okay. it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So you heard he, what he was saying. So I just, <laughs> I just heard robot. Um, it, I, I could say tell it me if again. I'm wrong, John. Are you sure? Go ahead. The question is how much control do the abutters to Heron Point Road have over the use of the road? In other words, they could they stop people from parking down in the Audubon land and walking across Heron Point Road to get out to the boathouse? Or could they object to that? Yeah, I mean, that I don't know. Um, 
you know, we were just saying that, you know, we did mention, um, you know, to secure access to the road, we might need to compensate the abutters. Um, but, you know, in terms of what happens. Yeah, but that, that, that's if we just, if the town decided to buy the road. That's if it was purchased, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how, how that would be affected, but, um, you know, from my understanding, right, the abutters own to the middle of the road. So I, I would think effectively they could potentially have that right. Um, I think, I think it was, uh, answered that, uh, the direct abutters to the road can't necessarily permit access to somebody, um, to pass along the length, along that part of the road, it has to be permission from whoever owns the road, which should be determined by the title search. Okay. Right. But that's, and then, that still says to me that whoever, whoever ends up owning the road after the title search. Yeah. Can uh, block or control the use of the road. And if that's true, that that says to me that a, a strategy of the town taking ownership of that road is important because we can't have somebody now or five years from now or 10 years from now saying, well, you can't go there. Right. Well, that, that's that's the question we're asking, right? Is is do we need to purchase an easement across that road to preserve our right to pass by it or do we want to buy it? Yeah, I think I think that's a I think that's a critical question. I think we need to answer for that. And let's say we do get rights to Heron Point Road. How do we get to it? Right, because it's still through the private neighborhood. Yeah. You know, and these are all the things we we did discuss, you know, and we basically just laid out that we just wanted to find out what the best solution was. You know, like these are the problems. We went through them and um you know, what would the best option for the town be? You know, would that be an easement? Would that be a purchase? If it were a purchase, how could we get to the landing? Um, so, you know, we basically laid out at the end of the meeting that that was the main goal is like, how can we find the best solution um, to secure access at this point? Did you sure. set up a... Uh a timetable or an agenda for our next meeting with kp law yeah with kp uh no from my understanding that they're gonna you know start doing their work and then they'll be back in contact with us right i mean this process is just being started so okay um did did we did you ask them to do a title search she I mean, said they are doing a title search yeah okay I guess I'm just thinking ahead to our own schedule. Is this, yeah. is this yeah, something that if we, if we have we have another meeting, let's say about August 10th, would they be ready, or do we we want to um, save a later um, meeting to talk with them? I'm I'm well. I'd like to see sooner rather than later, but I, mm -hmm. the main thing is to see that the, the KP Law has time to do the job they need to do. Yeah, um, just based. Based on my experience, if they were just given the task of, of doing the search, my, my guess is it, it probably will need more time. It's possible they could do it earlier, but um, you can always call Katie and just add or email or ask her for an estimate if she knows. You just kind of have to get in the queue, basically. So. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at this point, it was my assumption that there's, you know, we've kind of passed the ball to them to start the research and right. start looking into things. So I, you know, I, I certainly wasn't expecting that yeah. in the next right. couple of weeks, there's going to be, you know, right. any right. major progress done. Um, so, so I would think in terms of planning for our committee that, you know, it's probably going to be a couple meetings down the road that we're going to, you know, have another update, if any, hopefully. <laughs> Well, I think you made a great start and just keep in touch with KP Law. So, yeah, 
I think um, it's exciting sure for there, me. Uh, two, two reasons. One is to be yeah. sure, to continue that they're answering the, the questions we think mm -hmm. we need answered. And just, just so that uh, when the time comes, we can set up a joint meeting mm -hmm. with them. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I was just going to say, I, I think this is, um, this is my first time on a town committee and it's kind of exciting in a way to, to see something like this come together and, you know, hopefully ultimately solve a problem. So <laughs> I think it's kind of exciting. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, d -d 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 Anything more about Lieutenant Island that, uh, people want to raise. I, I, um, I had in, intended to go over and uh, uh, look at the, the roadway over to Audubon just before you get to the bridge and see if there had been any repair work, but I never got there. Um, and I, we need to get in touch with uh, Bill about um, a parking down at uh, Meadow Avenue. Um, anything else about Lieutenant Island? Uh, I, th I think um, we ought to follow I, I up on the, I think we ought to follow up to see if things are happening with the two things that we have agreed on anyway. All right, go ahead. I'm, I interrupted somebody. Sonia, were you going to say something? You were breaking up, but I'm assuming we were, you possibly, were you talking about, um, yeah, sorry, I'm just having a delay with the internet here. Um, Lieutenant Island, I know, John, you just said something, but I, I lost you there. Um, it got broken up, but I'm assuming you mentioned a couple more things. I'm assuming well, I'm just, uh, way I'm just saying that you know it wouldn't hurt us to um, uh, talk to Bill about uh, the Meadow Avenue uh, mm -hmm. parking, particularly now that he's had the, a uh, a meeting of the of the residents. And um, I don't know if Audubon has had a chance to get started on that construction program to take get rid of the hole that. You you get to uh, just before you get to the bridge mm -hmm. on the on the south side. Uh, which of us attended the 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 uh, owners meeting? I did. Okay. Would you be willing to get in touch with? Uh, Bill about Meadow Avenue, and I will follow up with Melissa Lowe uh, about what's happening um, as far as the Audubon repair. What's the schedule is? Is that is that still in the works? Maybe it's already happened. I haven't been there, so I don't know. Okay, um, we had assigned liaison contacts, and I think Sonia was um, for the Audubon. Maybe the the two of you can go. I talk to her. I don't know how, how you want to do it, but I just was going to throw that out there. <laughs> okay. I'll be glad to have um, maybe Sonia and I can find some appropriate tide to meet there and go look. And start. That's a good place to start. Great. Yeah, we can follow up with her. Um, you know, when we had our meeting with her a few months ago, it was the timeline for that repair was um, basically October first okay. that's when shell fishing opens in that area so from my understanding that's what the plan was whether that timeline has changed or not we can follow up with well i'll just i'll just, I'll just send her an email and copy you and we'll see see if that what the timeline mm -hmm. is um so we had a joint meeting with the shellfish advisory board which was uh, a very fruitful and interesting meeting. Um, one of the things I did following that meeting, and it's on the our package, 
is to lay out a set of shellfish access priorities, which I, I thought we heard um, from, that, from that discussion and comments from, from the shellfish constable. Um, and so the list is um, Lieutenant Island Southwest. We were just talking about that. Lieutenant Island Northwest, talking about that. Uh, Lieutenant Island Way 100, where we're we're a bit stuck. We need to unstick ourselves about that and just and see if there's a way way forward. Uh, the road repair, um, old old Briarcliff. I I may have picked that one out of my own hat. Um, there are a lot of issues. That's that's at the south end of Old Wharf. There's a lot mm -hmm. of issues there. Um, about potential flooding. There's lots of kayaks. Um, I just thought we ought to have a look at that in not only for shell fishing, but as a general access problem. Uh, Fox Island at the south end of Indian Neck, uh, we certainly need further discussion. Omaha Road is something that the shellfish constable is working on. I wrote down uh, Hiawatha Road. I'm not really sure that that is in the same level of priority. And then maybe because I'm interested and because it shows up very much in uh, Irene Payne's video, the two properties at, in the south end of Chipman's Cove, Spence Way and Cove Southeast. Mm -hmm. So with a little bit of prejudice- On um, the myself, sand pullout as well, right? The sand pullout. I think we wanted to look into that. Okay. And right. I mean, that was. I think that was kind of unanimous. Everyone. Well, most of us noticed that as an area of concern. Okay. And remind me where sand pullout is. So that is um, the road access from, um, you know, down to the Herring River. So along yeah. Chequesset Neck Road. Oh, that's the uh, that's Near, um, up uh, at the top of the hill. That's course. one up on the top of the hill. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's the the turnout from the road. Yeah. Right. Um. It's it's um. It's an access point. It's in between private property. Yep. I'll add that to the uh, final list. So, of the ones that we're not working on, and that Nancy is. So we're, we're working on all the ones for Lieutenant Island, but we needed further discussion about Way 100. Uh, Nancy's working on Omaha Road and Hiawatha Road. So that leaves um, Old Briar Cliff, try that again, Old Briar Cliff, Fox Island, uh, Spence Wind Cove Southeast and the sand pullout as um, priorities that I don't think are really being addressed. So do we, do we want to pick another one of those and begin to think about it as opposed to saying, well, we'll look at all five of them. Mm -hmm. we had, if we had one of those that we haven't been looking at that should be a priority, what, we, what do we think it is? I'll let the two shellfisher shell fishermen speak first. Melissa, you want to take a make a make a suggestion? Um well of all of them, I thought I thought that the most consensus was around the sand pullout. Um mm -hmm. but I'm wondering, I feel like we have a lot on our plate um in terms of other things. I don't know how we want to go about picking up what we left off with and then also having this uh, discussion with Comscom, Harbor Master, and 
potentially even talking about whether we want to put some parcels into our own custody um, to preserve rights of way. Um, I don't know how much time that will take, but it sounds like a lot to me. <laughs> so in other words, we have enough going on already. Let's, let's just wait yeah. for a while. And I, mean, I feel like things like that, we can kind of look at in the background too. You know, um, we've got a bunch of other things going on. I mean, you know, sand pull out could just be a matter of looking into who owns the properties on the other side. And, you know, I don't, I don't even know if there is an easement across that or not, but we can kind of look into that if we want to in the future. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. We, we do have a lot. Um, Melissa and I are meeting um, next week with Nancy, um, just like a preliminary meeting before we move forward with looking into a meeting with Conscom. So um, yeah, and then that discussion, what was really interesting, I thought from the joint meeting was just how many issues are associated with the landings and how many problems, you know, are, are out there. Um, you know, conservation issues, um, you know, issues with, with how the landings are used. I mean, there's a lot to think about. <laughs> so we might have our hands full for a little while. <laughs> I think Nancy has her hand up. Is, is there a hand? Oh, yes. Yeah, so, she, so she does. No. I, um, so I don't know about Hiawatha. I'm not really looking. Hiawatha is, you know, it, it, we've lost any way to get down there with a vehicle. And I thought that we were kind of focusing on Omaha Road because it would allow vehicle access. Um, the other vehicle access would be from Burton Baker. Um, so I'm not, I'm confused about Hiawatha. So I just wanted to ask a question about that. I just, and scratched, then, it I just scratched it out. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do about that. It's, it's on foot only and there's absolutely no parking over there. It's, this is an example of why this group exists. So that would happen there. Um, doesn't happen uh, yeah, in, in other places. Um, the other thing, uh, Briarcliff, and for some reason my computer is not letting me open my Word documents right now, but I was looking, Briar, old Briarcliff is in the Echeverria Appendix B for the NRA B report. I was just going to go online and, and get it from there, but it's number 37. So I just want to look at that because I, if it's in there as a town landing, is it um, in jeopardy? Should I look that up really quick? Um, Nancy, what I had meant, but no, it, it, it's it's it, it's in nature for you. It's quite clear it's a town landing. My my concern was whether there are other things going on there that may eventually. Um, make it less valuable to, to the shellfish, shellfish population. Um, for example, is it's pretty low lying or is if climate change keeps pushing the tides up, is that going to be a problem there? There's all kinds, I've heard of all kinds of kayaking problems there, which is maybe not directly related to us, but it's certainly something that we should think about. So it's not a question of a right of access, it's a question of the quality of the access, I think that I'm concerned with. Okay, asking well, I can question if this, we should uh, be asking the question if we should be concerned with it too, let's put it that way. Okay, um, I'll share what uh, some research that I did for a Rockwell revetment that's being proposed uh, north of um, Old Briar Cliff access mm -hmm. and uh, went back, we got feedback from, I, I got feedback from Greg Berman at the county, who is the sediment specialist and the, the, the beach nourishment specialist. Um, that, uh, that promontory, Old Wharf Point, well, from Old Wharf Point to Old Briarcliff, um, over the past 50 years has had very, very little erosion at all. Um, perhaps because it is protected from Lieutenant Island and um, kind of field point. Uh, but that is an encouraging thing. Now, sea level rise, of course, you know, that 
that would have um, an impact. So maybe we need to make sure that we can secure access along Briarcliff or uh, along Beach Road and down and around at some point if we think that we're going to lose that old Briarcliff access uh, with sea level rise, because of course that does, um, just like Lieutenant Island, it floods on the high tides many times a month. Um, and I, you know, it, it is an important access because we have not only access to the Old Wharf points grant, point grants, but also the people on the end of Lieutenant Island use that landing to go across the little creek to Logie Bay and get uh, over to their grants, mm -hmm. uh, which are actually on Lieutenant Island side, but the ones that are closest to um, Old Briar Cliff. So I think it's, it's, it's worth making sure that we preserve the access to that if we know that it's a town landing. It's interesting about the uh, lack of erosion there. That's that's encouraging and- You uh, can go on to that. I think it's a Cape Cod commission and you scroll back and forth uh, mm -hmm. with your- oh, like those things. That, like it's things. really cool. And it's uh, really encouraging for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I would also just put in my two cents about the sand pullout, because it is uh, uh, used not only as we discussed uh, at Shellfish Advisory, not only by shell fishermen, but by uh, finfish fishermen. And uh, I've seen people walk canoes down from there or kayaks down from there. And it would seem like, a, a especially for those who don't have four wheel drive, it would be an important little mm -hmm. access to preserve. And I believe it is on private property. We that should be on um, Jordan's document. It should say exactly the parcel number and the map. Steve, any thoughts on your? You haven't you heard from your? Any thoughts you have about priorities or next steps? Apart from the ones on Lieutenant Island, uh, no, I don't think so. I think um, finding out who owns the sand pullout property would be important, and that should be pretty easy to figure out. I'll do that. Great. <laughs> well, we started out. I can't remember when the committee was when we started out, we started out a year ago worrying about way 100 and it's um, still up in the air. Uh, and that's a, uh, I think we discussed when we were talking about this, we talked about, we needed to talk about the conservation with the conservation commission, uh, Barbara Brennesel raised that point because any access, um, from way 100, however, we we manage getting to the edge of the marsh means crossing the marsh, and um, uh, we have to see if there's a, a a way that we can do that without um, causing distress to the marsh. So that's a that's a. I think the reason why way 100 has gotten much discussion or progress uh, from us is because it is difficult. And it's maybe the hardest uh, nut to crack. So I, I think setting up a, a meeting with CONSCOM and I, I think we should, in doing that, we should maybe be sure that we have a fairly broad spectrum of questions if we have them. So um, I, I talked about another meeting in uh, the middle of August or before the middle of August that that, that might be something that we could uh, include. John, your the second item on your list, you have both NW Northwest and Boathouse, which is Northeast. Uh, didn't we also have uh, thoughts of talking about access to the water from the Northwest corner Lieutenant Island? Did you mix those two up in one line? No, that's just um, the reason I, uh, 
how should I put this? Um, I first became with, uh, uh, aware of that area when I was helping Audubon do, monitor some piping plover nests about 10 years ago. And those of us who were doing the monitoring called it Lieutenant Island Northwest. And then I added the word boathouse just for clarity. So uh, I didn't mean to exclude, I, I, I think there is some small access at um, on the, how should I say, the real Northwest corner. Yeah. But uh, I, you, I, don't you, think, you, I don't think that anyone has really raised that as an issue. And so I was just referring to the boathouse there. Okay. That may, maybe uh, that you didn't, been, that didn't, would have been a clear, have, clear. raised it in the past as an issue. Um, when we came up with our lists before, um, you know, that was like part of my list and we've mentioned it before. Basically that's that access point is also worth looking into. Um, there's, there's really only space there to park one vehicle and there's two sets of stairs that go down to the beach. Um, and those stairs are in between private property. I don't know what the arrangement is there if um, there's any form of easement. So that might be worth looking into just to guarantee access there. Okay, um, I happen to know both property owners on either side of it as well. So that could be a project for me to look into <laughs> to see if there's- I'm quite happy now to talk about Lieutenant Island Northwest is one bullet point and the boathouse is a second. That, that, okay. that clarifies what we're doing and I appreciate the correction. Okay. So, yeah, the other thing, and this is opening a much larger discussion um, that came out of the joint meeting with um, the Shellfish Advisory Board is we started talking about access points around town, which aren't just shellfish uh, access points. For example, how do you get to Dyer Pond? Um, how do you get to Cannon Hill Beach? And I, uh, about five years ago, the Natural Resource Advisory Board got interested in this uh, these issues um, based on the, on the work, particularly of H.F. Berea and, and Irene Payne. And um, we wrote a draft report um, which was kind of fun because I actually went and explored almost every point that was discussed in that report. It was a great way to learn about the town. And, and then we got it done and we didn't know what to do with it. So we, we never published it. And I circulated that around as something that we might think about um, um, making use of. The discussion we had to open this meeting about, Dyer Pond, about the Dyer Pond access um, particularly interested me because that, that seems to have been a historical access point to um, Dyer Pond from the from the west, but it was never it was it was never mentioned by a Tiberia. So um, as Sonia was saying before, we have a lot on our plate, but uh, I would like us to think about what I call town-wide access issues. That means issues which are more, more directed to all the general public, not just to the shellfish community. Because there are, there are a lot of us in Wellfleet who fit that bill. Yeah, so that, I mean, I thought that was um, what really came out of that joint meeting was actually not information regarding shellfishing, but like on the other issues regarding access in general, which which I thought was really interesting and worth further looking into. Um, obviously, as we were saying, a joint meeting with conservation, I think is necessary um, just to help us understand, 
you know, like right now we're working towards establishing a landing at the boathouse and there's going to be other issues associated with that, you know, like will that landing point be a spot where people could recreate and use kayaks, things like that, or, or would it not be, um, you know, Fox Island, for example, that is a public access point. Um, you know, we were looking into whether that could potentially be a, you know, a vehicle access point for shell fishing, but, you know, there, there could be maybe some kind of arrangement look in, looked into, you know, if conservation is struggling with boat storage, say at Fox Island, um, you know, I feel like maybe we really should be working with conservation to not only, you know, guarantee these landings, but in, improve on how they're being used. Um, you know, that discussion we got into as well regarding creating some, I mean, John, you mentioned this, creating some sort of a catalog as to how landings, you know, or these access points that we have throughout Wellfleet could be used. Um, you know, I, I thought that sounded really useful. And it looks like the um, Resource Advisory Board, I, I printed up that document, I didn't realize how many pages it was. <laughs> I printed it up because I'm old fashioned and I like paperwork, I guess, but, um, you know, like the legwork for something like that is, is kind of already done, right? Like in terms of figuring out like all these points of access and how we can use them. And, you know, is there a better way to put some of this information forward to the public? Like, is there, a, you know, some sort of a catalog we can put forward of like, um, you know, I mean, this is a type of catalog, but maybe something a little simpler just for people to understand which, which points they can, they can utilize for kayaking, um, you know, which points are just for shell fishing, um, you know, Great. things like that. So a couple, a couple of comments. First of all, I'm delighted to hear that someone else has to print things out before they can handle them. So <laughs> I did the same thing. That, they, they, that, that makes my day. But the other thing is um, we have to meet, we have to include in a, in a broader discussion about um, management of town properties, management, of access, um, is it always just access to water? Maybe, maybe there's some access to other places. And the to, to, two other groups who I would include in our discussion beside the Conservation Commission, is the Open Space Committee. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know uh, there are a number of these issues in, in a broad sense that Bruce Herter would be, who's the chairman would be interested in. And also the Wealthy Conservation Trust, which which is um, uh, Denny Denny O'Connell is the head there. Uh, e even though that's not a um, it's not a town committee, it doesn't report to the select board. Um, if you um, go to their website and look at look at their map of the lands that they own around town, they, I think they own about five hundred acres now, mm -hmm. and they they. They just acquired uh, some gorgeous land that, uh, that um, is on the uh, southeast corner of uh, the Herring River estuary, just above the dike. And that um, I've, I've been out there once or twice myself. It's a, it's a lovely place. So I think um, some sort of a joint meeting with those groups and, and would be helpful. I, I think we have to clarify our questions. So if, if I ask people to think about something over the next meeting or two, it's what, what would we like to achieve? Um, even if you just take what NRAB did as a starting point, where do we go from there? But I would spend some time on the, the uh, particularly on the Wealthy Conservation Trust uh, website and, and look at their properties and think, think about it. Um, there's, um, they have an awful lot of properties that actually are on or close to the water. So uh, uh, worthwhile. So I, th I think it, 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 it it came out as an issue, but now we, we have to focus the issue so we know what to do. Um, John? Yeah? I, I sent around an article describing the way that the town of Dennis has done it. 
Um, I don't know if anybody has had time to check it out. Um, but it was it was pretty cool because it showed all of the ways to the water in the town and all of the the number of parking spots, the kayak storage. It was very clear for each user of the access point exactly what was allowed, how many people or, or spots are available. Um, and that was something that I felt like was needed after our joint meeting. Um, it seemed pretty clear to me that, that there was a need for that. Um, so what the NRAB has done in creating this list could be a great starting point to move towards something what the town of Dennis has already done. Um, and then the, the broader conversation that we were having at the joint meeting about who uh, the different users of each access point, I think um, I, there's a question of whether or not that's something that we should take on, but also um, worth considering since uh, there's obviously uh, some confusion as to what is allowed in the first place. And I think our, our committee clarifying what we're allowed to do at each spot is something that could could be helpful for that. Um, Sorry. I, I don't know if that was clear at all, but. No, I, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I was very impressed with the, with the Dennis um, map and clarity on what's allowed at each point. I think that's a great model um, if we could achieve something like that. Um, Melissa, I didn't, uh, I don't have that printed out. So, <laughs> do, yeah, you, uh, <laughs> do you remember what, uh, what date it was you sent it, roughly? Hang on. Um, that was, or do you know, Barbara? Yeah, I'm looking. That was July 18th. Um, I could screen share if that's helpful. I'll be able to find it. Okay. As long as I was included on the... Uh, yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. One, one of the things that NRAB is interested in, in fact, we're having another look at it, is the ponds. Mm -hmm. And there are, it's not there a question of access, but it's a, a, a question of the amount of access. Because uh, I think particularly since uh, sharks happened, there are more and more people using the ponds. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That's the that. Pond, the ponds are much more delicate ecologically mm -hmm. than the than the ocean, and um, uh, I think that's something that we uh, we have to look into. It's an access issue because if if we think the ponds are being overused or can demonstrate that at some point, then we're talking about an access, uh, perhaps restricted access, which is not going to be popular with the summer population. If we start down the broader area of, of access to facilities broader than the shell fishing opens a whole range of interesting issues that uh, worth worth discussion. John, uh, Helen got her hand up. Uh, thank you. Are you the chair, John? I think so. Uh, please yeah. go ahead. Yes, thank you. Um, a very good thing to look at closely, a very good thing to look at closely if you are concerned about the fragility of the ponds and maintaining some of them Ensuring that some of them in, uh, continue to have a somewhat remote status is what happened with the sluice. Um, that's a case study in why you shouldn't have people being able to park too close to some of the ponds, given that we have public access to all the great ponds, that's 10 acres or over. And the real problem here, which is the reason I wanted to say something is, what came up about the sluice, which I've now gone through three cycles about, 
is enforcement. If you restrict access, right, and it's not physically restricted, like, hey, you can't drive in here because there's a thing across the road, right? The enforcement issues in the summer are just a nightmare and they're basically impossible. And please just consider that if you start thinking about which ponds you can do what with. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, good point. And I would say that uh, the ones that I'm familiar, I'm most familiar with Long Pond, the uh, access there is pretty much restricted by the parking lot. When it fills up, you have to go someplace else. Uh, I think Great Pond is about the same. Um, but Steve, I'm, I am guilty of finding a way around that problem because I have family members who love to use the pond and I am the chauffeur and I'll drive them down and say, let me know when you want to come home. Shame, shame. shame. Yeah, right. So <laughs> none of us are perfect. No. No. Yeah, our family pond that we always swam at was Duck Pond. Um, you know, and since the sign has been installed on that road that indicates that it is Duck Pond Road, um, the usage of that pond has increased dramatically. Is there um, any parking? There are a few parking spots, but I mean, that pond is crowded now. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like yeah. insane. So. One, one area that did get uh, access restricted was the cause, causeway between uh, Gull Pond and Williams or whatever the next one is. Do you call it the, Gull, the causeway? Anyway, that that's all blocked off now. I can't put a car anywhere near that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Helen. I'll, yeah, I'll... Um, that's what I referred to as the sluice. Yeah. That is the sluice. Um, you know, between the two ponds. Yeah. But there's this other thing that we do quite deliberately here, which has to do with employees working for the town. But, you know, before nine and after four, those parking lots of the ponds are very less inhabited, except on the very hottest days at the very hot of the season, yeah. uh, height of the season. And people tend to spread out the use because of it. Um, and I know that because I always go after four, got a sticker, just saying it, you know, yeah, sure. You have visitors, they want to go in the middle of the day, but a lot of times it's spread out because of the sticker requirement. Thank you. Barbara. I, I thought maybe I could be on the pond subcommittee, you know, since I'm new and, um, you know, there's already specialized knowledge on shell fishing, so I could be on the pond subcommittee. Uh, look, um, Barbara, look for uh, meetings of the Natural Resource Advisory Board. Okay. Because we have two members of that board um, live on the ponds and are very concerned about um, their health. One is Herb Gestalter lives on Gull Pond and um, uh, Laura Hewitt lives on Long. And I am very fond of, of Duck Pond because if you, if you go there in the spring or fall, it's just a beautiful, quiet place. Absolutely. Right. So I guess the um, I mean, the sort of the scope of this committee, I guess, is not just the rights of access, but kind of the quality or, or with attention to the use of the resource as well, I guess. I think the way the way I'm seeing the link, uh, yes. Barbara, is um, at some place like Duck Pond, which mm -hmm. is which is historically had the, the purest water of any of the ponds. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about access, you're talking about restricting access. Whereas when we're we're shell fishermen talking about uh, Lieutenant Island Northwest, we're talking about more access. So some of the discussion okay. there, there's discussions on both sides of the equation. Um. Uh, Let Melissa's got her hand up, John. Physical. 
hand up. Who, who, whose hand's up? Melissa. Oh, Melissa. You're muted, Melissa. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Um, the other thing to think about with the ponds is that many of them are in parkland. Um, I'm not really sure what we can do inside the national park. Um, I mean, we could try, but uh, it's just worth acknowledging. Um, and that also became clear at the, the selectmen's meeting uh, on Tuesday that there's exchanges of land being um, discussed between the town and the park that I think we should be aware of. Um, and I'm not sure what that means for access. And, I, and again, I don't know what we can really do, but I think we should be aware of it. But anyway, um, in terms of the usage of access points and whether or not that's something that we should be taking on, I think our work so far has been really about securing title rights. Um, to preserve access for the public. But the next step that seems intuitive really is to communicate that to, as, to, the, to the public what is allowed um, once that access is secure. And now that we know that there are areas with problems um, and problems with all of the users, then maybe that is something that we should be involved in. So that's the link that I, I saw. Um, anyway, that's it. <laughs> I, I, the, the seashore is, all, is already very concerned with the ecological health of the ponds. The two, two scientists uh, are uh, uh, Sophia Fox and uh, Steve Smith. Uh, and um, the, the connection is how much work are they doing or is it sufficient? Um, I think NRAB is probably convinced that it isn't sufficient, but that's a subject of future discussion. But what we, what we can control is, is the use of the pond by visitors, swimmers, kayakers, and how to, how to, how to, how to get a, a balance or better balance there if, one, if it turns out that one is needed. Uh, how do we do that when it's on park land? But, the, but on duck pond, gull pond, long pond, great pond, not dire, but those four ponds, a lot of the access goes through town land. The, okay. the, the access point on Great Pond is a town landing. The access, when you walk down to Duck Pond, you're on a town way going down to a town landing. So we, town has ownership rights on at least those four ponds. Okay. We've got a lot to talk about. Um, I don't know if we came to any brilliant decisions, but we had a good discussion. Maybe we can make some decisions if we talk about the minutes of June 7th and July 15th and at least get something approved. Um, are there any comments? Uh, Sonia puts together some good minutes. Are there any comments on, the, on the, either of those minutes? Any corrections, changes that anyone wants to make? If not, I, I would need a, a motion to approve. I move that we approve the minutes for uh, uh, the two July 15th joint meeting and the June 7th uh, meeting. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Um, let me call the roll, Steve. Aye. Uh, Sonia. Aye. Melissa. She's muted, but she said aye. Okay. Aye. 
She said, I, I say, I, um, I haven't Barbara. forgotten Barbara, but you weren't at the meeting. So I, you don't get the vote abstain. on that. Yep. So one abstain. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think we talked uh, an awful lot. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, I agreed to write up something about um, the Dyer Pond access from Rawl and at our next meeting, see if we want to run with that. Is anyone else upon further discussion thinks they'd like to write up something for themselves? Uh, that's fine. Um, I think um, we need to come face to face with the issues at Way 100. Uh, that there are else, elsewhere uh, on Lieutenant Island, we're making some sort of progress. Um, maybe we ought to kick sand, the sand pull out higher. And um, we, need, we need to begin to th think about uh, the town-wide issues that we just talked about, which would include ponds, um, use of, uh, say, uh, Mayo Beach, um, getting together with Open Space Committee, getting together with um, the Wells Beach Conservation Trust. Anything else that, um, look forward to a discussion with KP Law when they're ready. Um, those are sort of my sense of the priorities. Is there anything else that, as a takeaway, anyone else like to suggest? Melissa, you're muted. Melissa, you're muted, yes. Well, if I got to be clever about this, um, I would be able to handle that problem. Who's, uh, who's on the schedule next to um, lead the next meeting? I don't know. You're the chair of this type of meeting, maybe you just appoint the next one. I don't remember when I did it last. You want me to just volunteer for the next one? Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm on for people that. make decisions for me. Anyhow, it's an interesting meeting, I think useful. Um, yeah. yeah. We will we will meet again. Um, John, Barbara has her hand yeah. up. Oh, yeah, okay. it's just in case you were gonna ask for a motion to adjourn too quickly. I was just gonna um, apologize to everyone again for my being late and I just a work thing. So I'm sorry. So between now and next meeting, I'm gonna really get up to speed on the NRAB reports and everything else I can learn. And I think, um, you know, I'm just really happy to join the committee and hope I can be useful. I'm thinking I can be um, maybe I can be helpful on the pond subcommittee. And then I spend a lot of time thinking about the relationship between, you know, the town and um, the national seashore. So maybe I can be useful there. Um, I have this very useful document, foundation document um, that Lauren McKean gave me. And I um, talked to her just in my role here in Truro. So I'm happy to you know, help out in whatever way I can there as well. So thank you. Great to have you on board. You've got a lot of knowledge and skills that's, that's going to help us. So yeah. I think it's, it's, it's a good team. Um, yeah. I move we uh, adjourn the meeting and would look forward to see 18 takeaway, seven is 11, round about, um, August 10th for, for our next meeting. That would give us time to talk about the Dyer Pond. And if we decide to communicate anything to the planning uh, board, we would be able to do it. I uh, second your first mo motion. Yeah. So I move we adjourn the meeting. I second. John, can I say one more thing? Sorry. Yes, please. Uh, I just wanted to add to the list of things to talk about. Um, whether or not we want to take custody of parcels. Um, is, is that something that we want to discuss? We want to take 
I had sent around an, an email a while back uh, talking about the possibility that we could potentially take custody of parcels that are access points um, in an effort to prevent the town from selling them. Um, okay. And there's a, a whole process listed out in the email. Um, yeah, I, I, I remember that. Um, the only reason let's I, ask, I mentioned- let's ask, let's ask Steve to put that on the, on the agenda for uh, our next meeting. Okay. okay. It's a it's a it's a good subject, and I we were we we're, we're pretty busy this meeting, so I didn't get a chance to raise it. Yes. Okay. I think we're ready to adjourn. Um, dinner time. Thanks for all your conversations, and uh, look forward to our next meeting. Was the motion seconded? If not, I'll second. I seconded it. But okay. We're gonna vote on it. Aye. Aye. Barbara Carboni, aye. Sonia Woodman, aye. Is Melissa still with us? Melissa, aye. Okay, five eyes. Have a good evening, guys. Thank you. Thank you, John.